Welcome to the Restoration Revolution Podcast, where we help restore hope and put your family on the road to recovery one episode at a time. Here's your host and owner of Hazard Clean Restoration, Chad Melanie. Forensic restoration goes way beyond what meets the eye. There's a science to every stage, and each one comes with its own serious risks. Welcome back, everyone. I'm Sophia Yvette, co-host slash producer, back in the studio with Chad Melanie, owner of Hazard Clean Restoration. Chad, how's it going today? It's going great, Sophia. Going great. Having a great day. Great. That's wonderful. So, Chad... Forensic restoration is such an interesting topic. Can you explain to our listeners how forensic restoration has different stages or risks associated with it? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, you know, obviously, so we, we in, in what we do is for, with a biohazard, one call could be completely different than the next call that we receive. And, you know, we, we do a lot of different uh, variety of uh, different incidents that occur. And so some of them are, you know, just some crime, crime scenes, trauma scenes. Uh, you know, you could have some bioterrorism, drug labs, you could have infectious diseases, uh, you know, that, that, that occur. You get an unintended deaths when someone passes away and maybe their family was not aware or, or, or whichever and so you know, that that occurs uh, we get hoarding because there's a variety of calls that we get we have obviously a variety of risks that are associated with the different incidents and so there's five levels in between some of the levels there's some sub levels but in general there's five levels um, that we have of bio risks associated uh, with, with forensic restoration five levels wow What's the first thing your team does upon arrival at a forensic scene? Well, we're going to do a site assessment. So, you know, we're going to go in, we're going to assess the situation, determine the risk level, uh, whether, you know, if it's, if it's like a bio risk level one would be, you know, like a small room you'd have, you know, you could have blood, you know, urine, feces, anything like that, uh, some soft tissue, whichever that you may have in, in a small confined area or a room, that would be what we consider like a bio risk level one. And they go up from there. Now, how do you assess and mitigate potential risks on site? Well, we do that through our training. You know, we, we really focus on, you know, making sure that our training is, you know, top notch and, we continually evolve, and I think that's important. We evolve with science. We evolve as you know, as uh, new techniques come out. Uh, new, the you know, it feels like especially with AI and everything else, things are always changing, and we try to stay on the cutting edge of that, and we make sure we protect our team uh, really through, uh, you know, through through following the science, following the latest ways to protect ourselves. And, you know, you think about surgeons, you know, a hundred years ago compared to now, they, they look completely, they kind of look the same a little bit, you know, they, they do kind of the same things trying to protect themselves, but with the knowledge that we have now, their processes or techniques, their training is a lot different than it was, you know, even 50 years ago. 100%. Now, what kind of protective equipment is essential during forensic cleanups? Well, so that's going to depend on the bio risk level that's associated, but in general, it's going to be making sure that you know, we have PAPR. And so it's kind of a, a, a powered respirator or gas mask is a, lo a lot of the community may know them as that, you know, we're utilizing that and we're going to be in, what's a, a full PPE. So we're going to have you know, from head to toe, we're going to be completely covered. We're going to have, you know, two to three pairs of gloves on, depending on that wrist level. Uh, and they're going to be hospital grade gloves. They're not going to just be, you know, your ba basic mechanic gloves and everything. Uh, and um, we're also, there, there's, there's different techniques that we're going to apply as well where, you know, we may go in and make sure that we can knock down some of that risk initially before we start working. And depending on what we're dealing with, we're going to, we'll use diff different 
techniques and different products in order to accomplish what we want to do. And our end goal is whether it's virus level one all the way up to virus level five. And I could go through the different levels if you wanted to. Um, but at the end of the day, we want, we want to make it so clean and so safe that if the owner of that building or that area wanted to open a daycare the next day, they would be able to do that. Wow. Now, what happens during that final stage of forensic restoration? Well, so the final stage is really going to be verifying that we've done what we came out to do. So we're going to verify that, you know, we made not only accomplish whether it, if, if it was, um, you know, if, if it was some kind of, I'm just trying to come up top of my head, but you know, if, if, if you had, let's just say, um, any kind of blood or tissue or anything like that, or, or, or whichever, we're, we're going to make sure that we've gotten those surfaces, uh, you know, all the way down to hospital grade safe. And that, that's, that's really what we focus on. If we were dealing with, uh, you know, like a fentanyl um, or anything like that or meth or anything, we're also going to make sure that we're testing that to make sure that we've eliminated and neutralized the threat there. And so really the final step is making sure that we're verifying that we've done what we said we were going to do through all that. Now, how do you determine when a space is safe enough to re-enter example, like you said, to open a daycare the next day? Oh, I think exactly what, what we were just talking about is, um, you know, there's, there's, there's a, depending on what we're working with. So if, if we're working with, you know, say a unintended death, you know, there, there's going to be processes that we have to see, you know, what we're working with at that point, as far as, um, you know, how, how dirty is that surface. And then we're going to be able to, through science and everything, be able to quantify what that surface is after. So we, we'd be able to see before and after what we started with to what we finished with. Um, and, you know, the same thing with, say it was fentanyl, we'd be able to be able to verify, hey, yeah, there's fentanyl here. And then afterwards, we'd be able to test and verify that there's no fentanyl. That we've eradicated it and we've neutralized that. So there's no longer a threat. Wow. More great information from you, Chad. Thank you so much for that information. And we'll see in your ne- you will see you in your next episode. Have a fantastic rest of your day. Thanks, Sophia. Bye, everyone. Thanks for listening to the Restoration Revolution podcast, where recovery starts here. Let us help put your family on the road to recovery. Go to hazardclean.net or call 772-259-5018. That's 772-259-5018.